Hello everyone and welcome to the Hackanons YouTube channel. In this video, we will see what is the init.py file used for. So without further wasting time, let's get started. So before we go to see what does the init.py exactly work around with, first let me show you what I've exactly done. I've created a folder that names as init in it and in that I've kept two python files. One is a file.add.py and the other is the dunder method that is init.py and inside the add.py I've created a simple python function that adds to numbers and it takes in two integers as an arguments and returns the, its addition value. And when it, within the init.py, I've simply created a print statement saying hello world. Now that we've seen the exact design and the code inside both the files, now let me open another folder. And in this folder, I'm simply going to import those files using the import method. So basically it's within the same folder as you can see over here, there's this init folder. So I'm going to access that. So to access that, I'm simply going to say from init, I should type it as a capital INIT dot. And now I want to access the add function. So I'll say from init dot add import the add function. And now if I simply want to get the output, I will have to first print the function and then I'll have to call it and let's put in two numbers. Let's say 10 comma two. And if I run this, uh, on the output window, we get the output of the number 12 along with the print statement of the string that is hello world. And this hello world came in from the init.py. And as you can see here, I have added no such information where we are trying to import the init.py file yet hello world is present on the output window. So the simple reason is, that the init.py always gets fired when we try to import any possible files present in that given folder. So even though we did not make any possible calls of the init.py, it got ran. And that is why hello world was first present. So basically that init.py file ran first. And after that, then the add function gets ran and the addition of 10 plus 2 is 12, which is visible on our output window. We can make use of this init.py file and make advantages out of it. So first thing is instead of always trying to import the dot add method, we can just import it inside the init method. So let's do that. So what I'm going to say is from dot add, that is the dot add is simply used to include a relative file from the same folder. And I'll say from dot add import add. So basically, from the add.py file, I'm importing the add function. And let's save this now. And now let me go back to the previous folder where I was trying to import this library. And now instead of making this call of init.add, I simply need to say from init, that is the folder, which in case I can also call as a library. So from the given init library, I simply want to import the add function. And now if I run this, as you can see, 12 is displayed on the output window and I did not even call the file's name. So this is advantages. Its application is usually used whenever we are working with great and complex code. So you do not need to worry about which file is being imported. But the main reason is we need to focus on the function calls. So that is why the init.py helps us organize that where we can add the functions explicitly and then when we try to import these libraries in the other code, we do not need to worry about which file you are working. Likewise, you can also place in some important data that you want to log in maybe whenever the library is run using the init.py file. So that's it from this video where we've seen the exact working of the init.py file and why is it exactly used. If you have any doubts, drop them down in the comment section and we'll be back soon with more fun and interesting videos.